Hi students. In the last video, we discussed how we can derive Lewis dot structures simply by using group numbers that represent the number of valence electrons. So again, group 1A elements have one valence electron, so they have one dot. An example, group 4A elements have four valence electrons, so they have four dots. Now remember, carbon has four valence electrons, but it wants to be like neon. So it needs four more electrons. Nitrogen needs three more, and we can just count over one, two, three. Oxygen needs two more. Fluorine needs one more. So that's very powerful. And we can use that by understanding bonding patterns. So if I look at the elements, here I have some elements and I can discuss bonding patterns based on their symbols. So we see that hydrogen has one dot, one valence electron, but essentially hydrogen wants two. As a result, hydrogen forms one bond because in a bond, there's two electrons. Now granted, these electrons are shared. So this bond probably came from, let's say, another hydrogen that had one valence electron as well. And as these two approached, their region of space, their orbitals overlapped. And now the two electrons are in between them. And we can draw that using a line to represent a bond. But essentially, because hydrogen needs one more electron, it typically forms one bond. Carbon needs four electrons. So what is it going to do? It's going to form four bonds. Nitrogen. It's got five valence electrons because it's in group 5A. What does it want to do? It needs three more electrons. Three more bonds. Oxygen, 6A. It needs two more electrons, two bonds. Fluorine, it's got seven valence electrons. It needs one bond. And neon doesn't need anything because it has two, four, six, eight. It has an octet. All of these want octets. Well, if there's two electrons per bond, now carbon by having four bonds, has an octet. Where did it get the four other electrons? Maybe a couple of hydrogens. Now, just because it has four bonds doesn't mean they have to all be single. Carbon can form two double. It can form a triple and a single, or it could form a double and two single, but that still results in four bonds, just like nitrogen. Maybe it has three singles, like we see in ammonia. But to have the three bonds doesn't have to be three single. What I also want you to notice is it has one unshared pair that's referred to as a lone pair. That helps it have three bonds and still have an octet. But again, the nitrogen can have a double and a single and a lone pair or it could have a triple and a lone pair. And we'll see that's the case with the diatomic nitrogen, just like we see a single bond for the diatomic hydrogen. Then oxygen likes to have two bonds. Why only two? Well, it already has two lone pairs, so it forms two bonds. It's two away from neon, like an H2O. Now the two bonds don't have to be two single, it can be a double, like in the case of the diatomic oxygen. And then we see fluorine likes to have one bond. Why? It's only one away from neon in having an octet, so it only needs to share one, like with hydrogen. So I hope these bonding patterns make sense. Um, we're going to continue with Lewis structures and more complex ones and how to draw those in the next coming videos. Thanks so much for tuning in.